dice, math rocks, random tumbling pieces of plastic, metal, wood, gemstone, or even bone. These are the fundamental things we use to play this game. Now, we're going to go over exactly what each of them are and why we use those specific ones and not this thing. We first begin by going over each of the seven. In a standard set of dice, there are a d4, d6, d8, two d10s, one with two digits and one with one, a d12, and lastly, a d20. Not every character will need all of these dice, and sometimes you may go half a dozen sessions before you even have to use one or two of them. But today, we're going to learn what each of them do and which ones you should reach for when your DM says your name. First, let's start with the most important die in your arsenal, the d20. Anytime your DM says to roll a skill or ability check, a saving throw, or an attack roll, that is the die that you will be using. In a standard D&D session, everyone is going to have to roll at least one d20. Even in the most roleplay heavy of sessions, you will need to at least make a deception check, or persuasion, or insight. That's the guy for that. If you're ever wondering what you should be rolling, odds are you should assume it's a d20. It's kind of a rule to live by. The d20 is your best friend. It's the first die to roll in any situation. If you pick up any other die, be sure that you're confident in what you're doing. If it's damage, unless specifically asked for, you should probably be rolling to hit first. Or if the DM says they're going to deal damage to you, make sure they rolled to hit you first. Always perfect. If your DM didn't ask you to save, ask them what they rolled, because you bet they're not going to forget to ask you to roll. From here on out, we're going to go from bottom up. So the next is the D4, then the D6, and so on. I just wanted to get the 20 out of the way in the start because it's the most important. All right then, the D4. This guy is used for a bunch of things, but mainly it's used for weapons, like daggers and light hammers. It's also used for a monk's unarmed attacks at lower levels. It's used for a cleric search for its guidance, bless, resistance, and lastly, magic mist. This die only has four sides, and so the benefit or detriment of its randomness is the most minimal. Because no matter what way you slice it, you're not going to roll a large number. If you use big weapons and don't often get boosted by spells, you're probably not going to use this guy very often. And so we're just going to move on next to d6. This is the one that you're probably most familiar with. Although, they usually look a little bit more like this. Although, we use these ones with the numbers on them because we can't count dots. This one is a bit more commonly used than the D4. It's used for a variety of weapons like the short sword and one-handed quarterstaff. It's also used for various spells like Guiding Bolt, Dissonant Whispers, and Fireball. And it's also the sneak attack guy, so rogues get a bunch of these. Most of the time, that's all this die is used for. There are very few things outside of combat that a D is used for. So, we're gonna keep moving on. And we move on to the D8. And the story here is very similar. The D8's most common use is with, again, weapons. Whether it's a one handed longsword, two handed trident, or a longbow, they all use the same die the D8. It's also used for spells like Sacred Flame, and Chromatic Orb, and Cone of Cold, and Cure Wounds. This is where the healing also begins to become really profitable. While the D4 is used for healing word, with Cure Wounds, a D8 really could save you. The D8 is also the first die where the impact of its size is really felt. It is a disaster when you roll a D8 and get a 1. Whereas with the D4 and the D6, you're never going to roll very high to begin with. The D8 has 8 options, and so the spread is way bigger than the rest we've talked about so far. Not counting the d20, talking meh, meh. And this split is only going to get worse if we move on. On to the d10s because, yep, there's two of them. This one is the one that you should normally use. It will make things less confusing, but um, this one does the same thing just with two digits. It's used to differentiate it for when you're asked to roll a d100. 
A D100 is rolled thusly. Take both of these and toss them down. You have to read them like this. A single digit is the ones place and the big one is the tens place. So if you get a 70 and a two, then that's a 72. If you get a 40 and a zero, that's a 40 and a zero, zero and a zero, and that's 100. That way, your combined possibilities equal 100 between one and 100. You could also do zero to 99. There are some people who do that. That gets really confusing and uh, I don't know. I did it like once and I it just gets confusing. Just, just do it the normal way. And yes, I know all about the big actually 100 sided die, but having used one, they're terrible. They're effectively spheres and so they can roll and spin and tumble forever. They have to be used on a perfectly flat and level surface or they're more hassle than they're worth. And they're also massive. They're bigger than golf balls. It is not desirable, not good at all. Now, back to what a D10 is more commonly used. They're usually the biggest one in terms of weapons. This is where you get your two-handed war hammers and spells in this range are like Eldritch Blast and Hail of Thorns and Firestorm. While a lot of things are D10s, they are usually restricted, again, to combat. Now, on to the last for today, the D12. The D12 is my least favorite die by a uh, long shot. This is because of the fact that its spread is so large and you roll it so rarely that it feels like you always roll ones. It has 12 freaking sides and you never ever land on anything with double digits. This is a fact. The odds should be equal. They are not. This is where your great axe and your lance fall into, the biggest weapons. The great sword is also here in this category, but it's better because it uses 2d6s, so not the time for the great sword. It's also where spells like Crown of Stars and sometimes Toll the Dead fall in. They can be great, but the reason why Crown of Stars doesn't suck is because every single one or d12. And so when you roll 1-1, one, one, you're guaranteed at least like an 8 or a 9. That's probably not gonna mean it sucks and was wasted. This die is the least used by far. I genuinely don't think I've rolled one in months, and that's down to a game design thing. They include it, but nothing asks for it. And that's the end of the basic breakdown for what each of the dice are. Now let's get over why D&D has so many dice. And the answer is very simple. Diversity. We use so many dice because you need to have diversity in terms of the things that you're rolling for. All the way back to the first edition, they used a, well, instead of six, they just rolled the d10 twice, it, like second or whatever edition, exactly, when the double tens was implemented. Point is, you want a dagger to feel different than a long sword, and you want enemies to be able to deal different minimum and maximum of dice. Like earlier, I mentioned the greatsword, 2d6s where the great axe is a d12. There's the spread difference. The same thing happens with fireball and I don't know, what deals 6d8. The end result is a more diverse feeling game where if everything was D6s or D20s, nothing would be quite right. You'd have to set weird minimums and make sure that people couldn't roll above or below certain numbers. None of it would. And that's also the game design thing. They're like, hey, we want this to feel diverse, unique, and every character to have their own dice feel. Rogues roll a shit ton of d6s, whereas barbarians are going to be only rolling the d20 and the d10 or the d12. Maybe the d6 if they're a great sword user like it should be. Now let's go over how familiar you should be with dice. The d20, d6, and d8 are probably going to be your most used. Then the d10 and d4 kind of trickle in there as maybe a few times a session depending on your character, maybe you'll never use them, maybe you'll what? And lastly, the D12, where no one uses it for three months and when they need it, they realized they lost it. The D20 should always be your go-to for what to roll if you're ever in doubt. 
And if you ever are in doubt and you're wrong, it's a risk. I'm sure your DM would be more than happy. Which die you've got to roll. We're all just here to play and they don't want you to get frustrated. Now that we've done the what and the why, next time we'll go over the how with a video on how to combat train yourself and your characters and get very, very familiar with each and every one of these dice. So be sure to subscribe here to not miss out on that and also be sure to like and comment as it makes a huge difference in this chaos of an algorithm on YouTube. We've also got a Patreon where we just posted January's homebrew pack themed around cyberpunk and futuristic technology. And lastly, thank you all for watching everybody. I'll see you around next time. Bye.